I hope I've motivated for you that the P versus NP question, the question of whether these two complexity classes are the same or different, is one of the most fundamental questions, really one of the one of the biggest unsolved questions, not just in computer science, but in all of science and mathematics. So again, if any NP complete problem can be solved in polynomial time, then they all can be, and P and NP are the same. Now, what would this mean? It would mean literally that anything which is easy to check, easy to confirm, is also easy to find. Think about how strange that would be. Think about a needle in a haystack. If I pick up a little bit of something and I want to check to see if it's a needle, I can confirm that by trying to prick my finger with it. But if I have a vast haystack containing an astronomical number of possible solutions to a problem, it's hard to believe that there's a magic algorithmic magnet which can just pull a needle out of it or tell whether there is a needle somewhere in it without having to search hardly at all. So of course a polynomial time algorithm might be complicated, it might take a while, but it is still vanishingly, a vanishingly small amount of work compared to an exhaustive search, compared to exponential time. So it's really hard to believe that P and NP could be the same. We have a very strong intuition that they're different, that there are lots of problems, including all the ones we've been discussing, graph coloring, 3SAT and so on, that in general, at least for some examples, you really need to do a lot of searching. Now, on the other hand, why is this problem still open? Why is it so hard to prove that our intuition is correct? Well, because there is an enormous variety of possible algorithmic strategies, possible polynomial time algorithms. And it's very hard to prove simultaneously about all of them that none of them can work. We know how to prove lower bounds on the difficulty of problems with respect to particular strategies, but we have no idea, given the current state of our field, how to reason about all of them at once and prove that none of them can work. So this, this question is still open. Let's think a little bit about what would happen if P and NP were the same. Well, traveling salesmen would have much better routes. That would be great. It would be much easier to tile your bathroom floor. Jigsaw puzzles would be really easy. It would be much easier to pack your luggage in your car. You wouldn't get stuck in a local optimum where you have packed almost all the luggage and there's one suitcase still out on the driveway and you can't see how to fit it in and you have to throw everything out on the driveway and completely rearrange everything and start over again. Well, that would be nice, but there are some other stranger consequences as well. For one thing, there would be really no such thing as secure cryptography. Suppose you're trying to break the Nazi Enigma code in World War II. Well, one of the things about code breaking is that if you get it right, if you figure out the secret key and figure out the plain text message, it's usually pretty clear that you got it right. So if you guess the key for the Enigma code for that day and you're able to decode a message and it says, you know, the U-boats will attack the British merchant ship at dawn, you know you've got it right. Well, that means that code breaking to a large extent is in NP. But if P and NP are the same, well then, code breaking is easy. You can find that plain text message because it's something that you can check. There would still be some crypto systems based on something called a one-time pad that I don't really have time to explain to you, which would still be secure. But the thing about a one-time pad is you also have no way to confirm the message. So, let's see, what else could we easily find if P and NP were the same? Well, something near and dear to my heart are mathematical proofs. The whole point of a formal mathematical proof written in a formal axiomatic framework, which of course we don't actually like to do, but if we had to, we could translate our proofs into that form, is that they can be checked. We can check step by step whether each step in the proof follows from the previous, the previous steps according to our axioms. Well, so if proofs can be checked, if P and NP are the same, they could also be found easily. 
we wouldn't have to apply the kind of blood, sweat, and tears that people like me think we need to do. What else? But what about scientific theories? So Kepler looked at a bunch of data and said, gee, you know, my theory would fit the astronomical data, the observations really well, if the planets moved around the sun in ellipses instead of circles. Now that was a brilliant insight, but once you have that insight, then you can just check to see if it fits the data within a certain error. So if P and NP were the same, then we wouldn't need brilliant people like Kepler to have these flashes of intuition. If scientific theories can be checked, they could then be found. It's a little bit less of a formal statement, but think about the brilliance of Lynn Margulis, who said, let's look at the organelles in a cell, like the mitochondrion or the chloroplast in green algae. What if these were originally free living organisms, separate organisms that then got incorporated into the eukaryotic cell? Well, I know this is a less formal mathematical claim, but once you have that brilliant insight, then you can go around and find a lot of evidence in the biological world for it. And again, I, well, I like to think that you need those brilliant insights and those intuitions. So I hope that these things, these examples have convinced you that P versus NP is not just a question about graph theory or Boolean logic or traveling salesmen or Hamiltonian paths. It's really a question about the nature of truth, mathematical and scientific truth and creativity. Do we need intuition and creativity to find our way through the vast haystack of possible solutions to a problem or possible answers to a question? Now, the formal mathematical definition of NP didn't show up until 1972. But this basic question of whether things that are easy to check are also easy to find is much older. There's a famous letter written by the logician Kurt Gödel to his friend John von Neumann that goes like this. And he said, and forgive me for quoting it all, I promise not to read it all out loud, but he says, you know, let phi of n be the amount of time it takes to tell if there is a proof of n symbols or less, length n or less, for your favorite mathematical question. Now, if you have some formal mathematical language with, say, 30 different symbols, there are 30 to the n possible proofs of n symbols. Of course, most of these are total gibberish, but even cutting those out, there's obviously an enormous haystack of possible proofs. If phi of n is only, Gödel says, perhaps n squared, then frankly, it wouldn't be that hard for a computer program to check to see if there is a proof of, say, a million symbols or less. And if there isn't a proof of a million symbols or less, it's questionable whether a human would ever find a proof anyway, because being who we are and having a finite amount of time on this planet, the proofs we find tend to be rather short. In fact, we like short proofs. They're nice and elegant. So Gödel says, if this were the case, the mental effort of the mathematician in the case of yes or no questions could be completely replaced by machines. We wouldn't really need human mathematicians. I, of course, find this possibility terrifying. So I really want to believe that finding things like mathematical proofs takes blood, sweat, and tears, that it takes doodling and finding analogies and staying up late at night and throwing everything you've got at it as a human being. I fully believe that there will be artificial intelligences someday, but I think they'll have more in common with me than they have with my coffee maker. What they won't be is just some dinky little polynomial time algorithm where you just turn the crank and it always works and spits out the right answer. That's what would really offend me. So the P versus NP question is really a very deep and philosophical question about what is reasoning, what is creativity, and uh, it's not just about 
traveling salespeople.